because many of us were in good health and then something happens, a trauma, grief, something develops and our health changes. We hear this all the time, you know, I have never been well since I fell and broke my hip. I have never been well since I got the flu. Or I've never been well since my cataract operation. And that causes an energetic shift in the body. And in homeopathy, then we try to understand that energetic shift and we look at all aspects of the person. Now the way Hahnemann discovered this business about dilution, he initially uh, wrote a book called the Materia Medica Pura, which was 40 remedies that he proved very, very diligently. But these remedies weren't physical substance. They were very, you know, uh, non-diluted. And he wanted to reduce the side effects, just much like medications we're taking now. They all have side effects. And he thought, well, maybe if I begin diluting these substances, let's see if they still have an effect. So he scientifically began diluting them more and more. And he discovered that by diluting them, they actually had more effect. And it sort of doesn't make sense to us because at least the pharmaceutical model and our indoctrination by the drug companies, you know, if one aspirin gets rid of your headache, two are gonna make you feel great and you gotta take them every day. But in homeopathy, the whole belief structure is that the body has the ability to heal itself. And when you take these substances, they stimulate like as a catalyst to heal the body, to, to make the body better. The other thing that Hahnemann discovered was he did dilute these substances and he discovered that they had more power. And then he noted that the end of the day, because in his day, the physicians visited patients on horse and buggy. And he f discovered at the end of the day, the remedies seemed to be a little bit stronger. And he noted that because of the roads and the shaking and the jostling, and then he developed the whole process of succussion. And succussion is just a vigorous shaking of the medication. So when we do formulate these homeopathic remedies, uh, they are succussed or shaken, and somehow they increase uh, the energy. And there's been a lot of work now um, in the research to show that water does have a memory. And um, there was a study that was done in, in nature by a Dr. Benavisti, a French researcher. And he looked at extremely dilute um, dilutions of allergens and their effect on IgE. And research is being done now to show that dilute substances somehow uh, produce a memory in water, the hydrogen oxygen structure. So even though there is no physical substance, the memory is held in water. Now I started to talk a little bit about certain laws of homeopathy and one of the most prominent uh, homeopaths of our day was uh, a homeopath by the name of Hearing and Hearing's laws. And Hearing observed a certain phenomena with the body. And the more you practice homeopathy, the more you study homeopathy, the more important these laws are. And the first law is that the body heals from inside outward. Um, and the same, on the same token, disease goes into the body from outside in. So for example, a common illustration of this is a child with eczema. A child has eczema, you go to the dermatologist or pediatrician, and you're given steroids or some kind of cream or lotion to get rid of the eczema. The eczema clears beautifully, but the disease is pushed deeper into the body. So then maybe the child will develop asthma. And then the asthma is treated. The asthma gets better, but that's pushed deeper into the body and then maybe there's an emotional problem, a learning disability. Um, so when that same child is then treated homeopathically, 
the emotional problem gets better, maybe the asthma will return. And when the asthma is treated, the skin problem will come back. So the body heals from inside outward. And you can look at every disease process that goes on. In, in fact, what I have noted, and this has even been documented in the traditional ophthalmology literature, you know, cataracts are a very common operation. And people say, oh, there's no big deal. But the cataract is actually a manifestation of some type of disturbance in the body. So you have the cataract surgery done. Yeah, you see better. But somehow that disease is pushed deeper into the body. And you may develop glaucoma or macular degeneration. And studies have come out now to indicate that there is an increased incidence in macular degeneration after cataract surgery. And people that have macular degeneration, after cataract surgery, their macular degeneration will get worse. But there's other theories that state that, well, you're just getting older, uh, or there's some other factors. That hearing's law is, is so critical that you know, we usually look at a timeline of disease. You know, when your disease process started, how the disease has moved into your body. And that's one thing that uh, I really admire about homeopathy. The second part of, of hearing's disease is that there's a certain hierarchy that we have the physical body, you know, mental and emotional. And sometimes if you treat a physical disease improperly, it's pushed to a mental issue or a psychological issue. Likewise, a psychological issue, when it's treated successfully, it may develop into a physical problem. So we look at how disease moves this way. And the third part of hearing's law is the body tends to heal from above to below. So a lot of times, situations, if you have a diffuse skin rash, it may heal from above your body and then gradually get better as it moves, moves downward. Now, um, in homeopathy, when we do a homeopathic evaluation, you know, we look at the whole person. So not only do we study your particular eye problem, you know, what are your symptoms, how it developed. We look at associated problems, um, arthritis, digestive problems. We also look at the uh, mental and emotional issues. And in homeopathy, it's called the three legs of a stool. In order to select a good remedy, we like to have three good symptoms or features that represent a particular you know, remedy. Uh, and once we get those three good features, then we have something to hang our hat on. There's stability. So we look at a homeopathic remedy that maybe meant, represents the emotional state, uh, the physical, and um, the, the mental. So for example, like Nature Muriaticum is, um, is a very common remedy, and it has certain characteristics. Nature Muriaticum is usually a, an introverted person. The grief is usually you know, part of the homeopathic picture. And there tends to be a lot of dryness in the body. So these people may have dry eyes you know, dry macular degeneration. And there's certain other maybe physical, physical problems. They have sensitivity to the sun, um, prone to skin rashes. They have a craving for salt. So when we get this, this whole picture, then we're confident in uh, prescribing a homeopathic remedy.